Afternoon lovelies, how are you all doing today? I hope you're well. Oh, I just realised I'm slumping. Uh, uh, uh. Um, it's the day after the herb bed day. How am I feeling? I'm feeling like I need to just get stuck in and get on. Uh, <laughs> this all might be a bit quick. Last night, is, well, the forecast for this whole week has been clear, dry. It's really humid and muggy suddenly. It's quite warm. It's around about, oh, it's about 19, what is that, high 60s Fahrenheit. I checked the forecast again this morning and it's now saying we're going to get showers this afternoon. That's fine, I will work, I will carry on in showers. Um, it's just I won't be able to film. I was just thinking, like, literally gardening, gardening can sometimes feel like two steps forward or one step back. So I've turned up today thinking, oh, shower's annoying. I mean, great for the soil, but mm, annoying for working and filming. I won't be able to film if it's showering. But also I've turned up and seen that some of the stringing I'd done around my broad beans, they've been nibbled through. I've had it in the past. Foxes, they just no more with string, strings have snapped, so they need repairing. I have got a bit more string now. And, but really annoyingly, uh, all my little Taunton Dean cuttings. How many did I do in the end? I think it was 10 cuttings I took. Three of them have already been eaten by the blimmin' slugs. So where the I've got the cuttings just here on the shed stoop they're in quite a big sort of tray to suck and sort of just keep them moist so I've just put a load of slug pellets in the tray it's away from all the other creatures I really don't like using them but on the other hand it's like well what am I going to do feed slugs or feed me so yeah <laughs> I think at this time of year, I'm going to get out there, but it's like I was saying the other day with the tour video, I think at this time of year, it can be so easy to be put off this whole gardening lock because we're doing so much at this time of year, you know, trying to raise seeds and they don't grow because the compost is hinky or we, we put our plants out in the garden and overnight they all get eaten by slugs. And because we're so active in the garden at this time of year, the apparent, or should I say the the little miniature disasters, the little mini disasters, they're more apparent because we're probably seeing them every day. So yeah, we just have to keep taking deep breaths and, and <laughs> hoping we can rescue whatever's left. So first job of the day, got my gloves, got my bits and bobs ready up there. Onions today. So I haven't sorted them yet. I normally, I'll do that in the shed because if it starts raining, we can do that in the shed and I'll explain it then. But the first thing to do as you saw the other day in the tour, one of my beds is ready, but it's got some parsnips in it, which I'm going to hoik out. And the other bed is still covered, so I need to get it uncovered, and I need to tickle the soil with my fork a bit to see how it is, see if it's all right for planting in. Scatter some chicken pellets on it, get me row markers out, get planting, get on with it, it's going to rain. Right, come on, let's go and... Um, Let's go and get that bed cleared and see what the state of the soil is underneath. What did it have in it last year? I'm trying to remember. It had in it chickpeas and rocking core. So they were the things which were cropped and dropped. Um, so hopefully it won't be too solid. This was one of the first beds to be covered last autumn and actually over the course of the winter it's rain and worm activity a lot of the cardboard disappeared so this was a fresh lot of cardboard in February um, hence there's a brick underneath it looks quite moist good Mm. 
my soil it's always a, a balancing act of having it moist moist enough to work but not so sopping wet it's heavy and claggy but also not so dry it sets so it looks about about right okay I'll get the cardboard out of the way and we'll bring you in closer so we can see how the crop and drop worked and how what the soil is looking like. I'm going to have to come the long way round. Give me a moment. Just listen to that bird song. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Right, well you can see how sort of there's lots of twiggy bits which didn't rot down. Uh, weren't taken down by the worms over the winter so these do not need to be on an onion bed if this was the squash bed I'd, I'd just leave them all where they are and just put the plant through but it's just for the onions it'd be too fiddly planting through so I might as well just bear with me one moment someone has just turned up Oh my goodness! What a surprise! Oh, what a fantastic, lovely surprise. That was our mark. As in M&M's allotment, as in Mark and Mon who moved over to Norway. And he was just saying thank you for your tomato suggestions, which I passed on to him. I just back to, um, pack up their London home to do the final bit of the move. So, and as we've been chatting, it's gotten a bit darker. Right, that's that stuff off. Like I was saying, yeah, if it was, if it was big plants, I'd plant straight through. But to plant onions through all of that, oh, it'd be a bit fiddly and annoying. Now, let's give it the fork test. So, Let's have a little look. Oh, actually, it's really quite wet. But, but, really quite... I haven't got my stone bucket here. I'm seeing stones. Um, but that's actually really quite sort of friable. I mean, I don't need to... I'm, I don't need to dig it. I just need to, yeah, give it a bit of a tickle. Get the chicken muck on, get it raked so that it's a nice... Oh, sorry worms! <laughs> all the worms all the worms have been happy down there all winter and then I come along and disturb them. Right, so I'm going to get on with this. Oh, now I'll tell you what. See you later, Chuck. See ya. Uh, before I do this, let's just go over to the other bed and whip those parsnips out and see if there's, see if there's anything any good. I'm really not expecting much of anything because obviously they got left behind because they were so little and straggly, but... <laughs> oh my goodness, nouveau cuisine. But you know, I don't want them growing in the, in the uh, onion bed. I mean, <laughs> putting my fork in. That was a bit of overkill, wasn't it? I should have brought my trowel. Oh, that one's got a bit of, a little bit of size to it. Put it this way, they will become soup. More than happy, oh. And one right at the top. Oh, I'm going to get my trowel for the one that's right at the top because it's right next to my um, tree lily and I don't want to disturb the tree lily. Oh, how funny. How many times though, how many times do we go into a bed and get a surprise harvest? Normally it's potatoes, but yep, that's a scoff. Happy with that. Right, get my trowel and I need to get forking that other bed because I think rain is imminent. Last, last bit of this bed prep. Oh, I'll be glad when this is done. 
my back is starting to talk to me again. <laughs> so it's been tickled as you can see. I've had the um, chicken manure, sorry, clang, that was a stone, sprinkled the chicken manure pallets, raked it all over and then I've got a brick I'm placing just in the end of the bed there and it's just to remind me not to plant the onions right up to there because there will be beans in there. And now it's time to, <coughs> one of them is stuck down here, I've got my little string guides, I just put it along the edge of the bed just to remind me where the edge of the bed is so I don't end up trying to dig up the path which would be oh, horrible as I used to do and oh la la yeah I think actually so I um, put this string down I put the others down as well and it's time to now go go back to the shed to sort out how many onions I've got to fit in each row. I'm looking forward to that job because it's going to be a sit down job. Just like at home, I do a stand up job and a sit down job and alternate. So, oopla, just get the other line markers ready. Yeah, let's go sit down and go through these onions and pick pick the best and divvy them out so lovely the birds I was definitely definitely ready for a sit down um and a minute I'm gonna have a sandwich I'm trying a little experiment with my time I'm trying to just rejig how I do each day Bearing in mind that um, there's a lot to catch up on in the garden, um, but I think I was mentioning this the other day, I, I would love nothing more than to have every day for the garden. Oh, delicious! I'm kind of envious of my retired friends who do that, but I can't just do the garden every day. I still have to do all my other work too in order to pay the old bills, you know, I don't live off grid, I still have to pay bills. So I'm trying, just jigging things around a bit and it sort of occurred to me a couple of days ago when I was talking to, I think I was talking to Gary, that I've tried the whole thing of like, oh this is a sewing day, needle and thread, this is a garden day, mm -mm -mm. these days I can't do a full garden day because it hurts. <laughs> But I've, I've still been in the habit of, I come to the garden in the morning for about 10 and I'm here till about 2, get home and quite often I'm straight onto the computer to edit if I've been videoing. But even if I'm not editing, the rest of the day it's, it, it's almost a write-off because, and I'm not saying this is a pity party, mm -mm -mm -mm. no, 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 uh, just as a statement of fact and why things have changed around a bit. but get home about two o'clock and then the rest of the day is a write-off because the pain is so immense I can't do any I just can't concentrate and so it's like I'm doing a half day to do the garden and that's it so I'm just swapping and jigging and tying it that you know the first half of every day I do sewing needle and thread my shop staff orders uploading shops or whatever it is then the afternoon can be the garden and then the evening can be me doing my video editing because at least then I'm sitting down so when I'm in pain from my knees from the garden at least I'm sitting down anyway it's kind of it's kind of going okay but <laughs> sorry that all came god I could talk the hind leg off a donkey I could talk both hind legs off a donkey I could talk all the hind legs off a herd of donkeys that's why I've got sandwiches because I'd sort of had a, a little bit to eat around noon before I came but the day progresses quickly it's I, like just a morsel and it's I think it's about half past three already and I suddenly feel peckish so I don't want to go home bring sarnies right anyway you know sometimes I think I will get on now but sometimes I think when I share 
you know, how I'm having to rejig things or do things differently. I kind of hope for someone, somewhere, that me sharing it, that actually maybe helps someone else. If someone else has been in a similar position to me and they think, oh, you know, the whole day, oh, here comes a jellycopter, the whole day's a write-off because of pain. It's like, well, maybe shift the painful thing to the back end of the day so that you don't, you know, in the evening, when you've got that pain, oh my gosh, that's low and slow. It's right over me, I can't see the mark anymore. Oh, it's one of those army marks. Wow, it's, I mean, I can touch it. I mean, I can't, but it did my fingers off. What's it called, a chimney or something like that? Oh, don't say the orange one's coming back. Anyway, yeah, do, maybe do the painful thing towards the end of the day so that when you've got that real pain, it's in the evening when you can just, I don't know, sit and watch tally, sit and knit, whatever it is. Right, onions, get on, Vivi. So, <laughs> it's obviously the day for chatting to neighbours. It's one of my neighbours kind of gesturing. What is that helicopter for? We don't know. Right, so, red and white onions. I have got, for my red, I've got Red Baron. And um, oh, all I'm going to do for now is I'm going to have four rows of them, so I divvy them into four pots. That way, and what I do is, you know, I pick the best. I pick four of the best ones, one each. And as I go through the stash, then basically what I'm looking for is that the rows, all the rows, have at least some good ones in. Just habit. So yeah, Red Baron. Now. I've grown them ever since I first had an allotment here or you know since since I had it on my own so that's been for the last nine oh crikey nine years 2013 yeah I've always grown them um, it was purely by accident the first time as in it was an accident the variety I picked I didn't I didn't have any preference I didn't know what I was doing I liked the look of them in a catalogue, so I thought, yeah, I'll give those a go. Say exactly the same with my white onions, which are jet set. And what I found was, um, in that first year, they grew perfectly well for me here. The thing is, it's always that thing, isn't it? Everyone's garden is different. Everyone's soil is different. And in that first year, some things worked well, some things didn't. And the things that worked well, it made sense for me to do those again. So not only did they grow well, both of them, they both stored really well. And that is, in a way, I think, I think I'm going to put my neck out and say that's my priority, is the storage factor. Um, I have tried other varieties over the years alongside doing these because that's the thing isn't it it's like it's great to try new things new varieties new techniques whatever it is but obviously as the years have gone by I'm now relying on this food it's I was gonna say it's gone from a fun garden to a food garden it's still fun of course it is but I don't want to be doing anything too wild and wacky these days because I do need to know that I'm going to get a harvest so over the years I have tried other varieties uh, last year for example I had Cupido however was it last year or the year before forgive me if I'm mixing my years up oh a little teeny tiny too far a little um red admiral butterfly you don't see red admirals very often not red admiral what am I talking about talking about my hand tortoise shell that's the one I don't see very often um yeah, the Cupido, they all rotted in the ground. Don't know why. The rest of all my Red Barons and my Jet Set were fine. So it might have just been a hinky batch of sets. These are all from sets. Stir on, I tried. And lovely, lovely to cook with. Really good flavour. But again, they just didn't store. So... I think that's that's something to consider when you're I mean it's it might be too late for you this year to go out and find sets they might have all sold by now but if it's not too late and you are still looking to get some sets just have a mm, no, that one feels a bit bad just have a think about 
you know, what do you want? Are you just going to do a small patch which you're going to probably harvest and eat within a couple of months? Then the storage issue won't be so much of a factor for you to consider. But if, like me, you're wanting to store them so that they last almost right around to the next um, growing harvesting season, then then do... I don't know if catalogues mention things like storing, but yeah, if you've got, if you're lucky enough to get a catalogue that says, you know, what the sort of storage is like for them, if you can't find that information, then I would say, Red Baron for red, Jet Set for white. In my experience, have stored really well, and they grow well for me here. It may be that they don't grow as well for you. Give them a go. Right, I'm going to carry on divvying out the white ones now. I mean, <laughs> do you think it wanted to go in about a month ago? I've got a couple like that. I don't know that I want to use them necessarily. I don't know if they'd be a bit stressed. If I don't have to... That one's gone hinky while it's been stored. If I don't have to use those sprouty ones, I won't. But I'm going to finish sorting them. I'm going to have a quick botty. <laughs> botty? It comes from the Welsh, doesn't it, I think, Botty, from um, Buddy. Sorry, Welsh accent, uh, but from miners working back to back. It's my Botty, my Buddy. Or Buddy comes from Botty. <laughs> I need to eat. Okay, I'll see you back down in the garden, we'll get planting. I'm going to bring you down so I can sit on the floor. Hang on a sec. Oh, stretch. By the way, there's only three rows at the moment. There will be a fourth row, but it's because I've only, I've only got three rows of string. Yes, let's get down a bit. <laughs> Rusty. Hey, buddy. I can hear you meowing. <laughs> It's like, I've actually seen me sitting on the floor, so you think, right, that's an excuse for a cuddle. Okay, so, yeah, like I said, there's, I think Onion Day is just one of those back-breaking days, you just have to suck it up, buttercup. There's just no way around it. I've tried, the thing is about a stool, because I know some people are immediately thinking, use your stool, baby, use your stool. I'd be standing up, lifting the stool and repositioning it more than I would be sitting on it. So I do it this way, it's fine standing up bending over okay so quick anatomy ish lesson um i know we've been over this before but for anyone who's either new to the channel new to the gardening <laughs> very quickly onion which way is up which way is down on the bottom you should be able to see even before they get going where its little root plate is you can just see the remnants of the roots the top it should be considerably more pointy and almost sort of feel a bit papery on the top sometimes. So, top, bottom. I've got my trusty dibber, it's an old temple, to dib holes in, to pop them in rather than just push them in. I don't want them to hit stones or glass, of which there are a lot in my garden. And when I put them into the soil, if my hand is soil level, I'll dip them in and I'll dip them right in so there's basically nothing showing gives them a really good firm anchor then when they start to put their roots down because onions do like to chop themselves out of the ground also if you leave bits poking out birds cats he's just sitting there foxes even i'm not sure about foxes but they'll quite happily come along and pull the whole lot out for you so also a note once this is all done i'll be putting nets over the whole lot Partly, that's to stop the birds pulling them out. Partly to stop the cats thinking this is a gorgeous litter tray. 
but also if we're going to get have rain that's really heavy again it's that protecting the soil from being compacted i'm always about my soil until i can get mulch and then i'll mulch between the rows and between the plants uh, between the bulbs i'm not going to show you me planting all of these it's going to take me ages and i'm going to be taking a lot of breaks because looking after my back but just to say in terms of spacing I like to do my spacing within the row about 15 centimeters apart and then between the rows themselves it's about 20 centimeters the way I think of it is imagine imagine a lovely big onion full grown it wants to have space between they want to each have space between them and their neighbor they want space to grow basically and not end up touching each other so that 15 to 20 ish I found works perfectly well for me and it gives me enough room to weed that sort of thing um, is there anything else to mention is there anything I've forgotten depth spacing nets I have put a bit of chicken poo in this bed now um, that will probably be sufficient for them for the whole season if not then later in the season I'll use my daily urine as I do with everything else yeah, they're not, I've, I don't find them too greedy for feed. They're a bit greedy for time and my time. Now, oh yes, yeah, so that was what I wanted to say about why are they all sitting on the top of this all? Get them planted, Vivi. Putting them on the top, it just it does a few things for me. It just lets me visualise the spacing, for one thing. And then also, if I get to the end of the row and think, oh, I've got some spares, maybe I can, maybe I can nudge them all up a little bit more and stick a couple extra in here or there got a chance to do that also if you plant one cover it over and then move to plant your next one what if you can't see where you've just planted the other one <laughs> the spacing may go off so yeah I like to lay them on the surface first of all to make sure my spacing is to my satisfaction and then I can go along poking holes dropping them in covering over taking little breaks I have it looks like this is a slightly shorter bed than the one behind me and it's shorter again this year because I'm, I've left space at this end closest to me for my bean arches so I am actually ending up with two spare from each row but rather than try and cram them all in and go back over this ground I'm going to I'm going to hold on to them for now and then I'm just going to see if a space pops up somewhere where I might chuck them in you know what I could do broad bean bed I could pop them in the broad bean bed where I've got those gaps um, and just be a bit more potager about the garden this year none of this is going to happen until I get stood up <laughs> again and get planting so yeah come back when it's all done oh thank goodness for that <laughs> job done so that's Four rows of white jet set, four rows of red, the red baron, in and netted. That's taken me about four hours. That's ridiculous. Mind you, that did include all this bed prep. Oh, I'm so pleased to have a couple of beds sewn at last um, and get this year underway. I'm going to need some radox tonight or Epsom salts. So, that's two beds done. I've got this one, one, two to do, three done, four, five, six, seven, and then eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I've got twelve beds to do. Oh my goodness. If I do one a day on alternate days, it's 20. Twenty-four days. That will take me. I don't know what it is now. It's about the fourteenth of April. Yeah, if, if I do it over on alternate days, over twenty-four days, it'll take me into about the middle of May. Yeah, it's doable. It is doable. But I definitely need to go and get this back rested now. But yay! Happy, happy days. Two beds are planted. Woohoo! And on that note, I'm going to go and collapse in a heap for a while until I recover enough to walk home. And I will see you again really soon. I think, probably next time at home, I think I need to have 
a day away from the garden to rest my back a bit. So wherever it is, I will see you soon, I hope. But until then, please take care of yourselves. And oh, if you can, make the most of these afternoons. It's suddenly gotten really bright, having been really, really grey earlier. Is it about to grey over? It's about to grey over again. I'm going to go home before I get wet. Cheerio, everyone.